of God's people, this is a book that has just been published by Pastor Uzo and it is called Dreams, Visions and Their Interpretation. Dreams, dreams, dreams. How many times have you had dreams that disturbed you? How many times have people told you about dreams that you were lost? You could not find a meaning. But yet, this is a book for our times, an encyclopedia of dreams that contained the different types of dreams, their meaning, and more importantly, the objects that you see. This is a book that you must have, a book for every family. You might want to bless a family member or friend, people that may have come to you in the past. Now you have a solution. Now you have what? A book to tell them. Because this is a book that you must have all the days of your life. Remember, an encyclopedia is a book of reference. This is a book about dreams and a book that you could always go to now and again, again and again. God bless you as you richly buy this book in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for each and every one of you once again. Well, we are thanking God for the weather, even though it is very hot. Uh, to it be the glory in winter is cold and we thank him. Now it's quite hot. We still thank him. Uh, but we need all the rains. Um, and, uh, and it is well. I want to appreciate you, all my viewers. Each and every one. Look, I just have to say this and I will say it well. You guys have been fantastic by way of prayer, by, from your emails and um, some of you that do support us. I don't know how to thank you enough. Of course, we don't raise money on air. Uh, but God has been touching many of you and you have been sowing. I don't know how to pray again, but I'm saying that the you that have been sowing secretly, let God bless you openly in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for your heart, for your wife, your husband, and your children. I thank God for our brothers and sisters and parents, of course, and uh, to, to him alone be the glory, of course, and indeed, um, well, is what repeating something is going on now uh, concerning our our deliverance moment hours always a full house be a partaker where we pray for anything you cannot understand in your life rising and falling frustration anything that you you have prayed for and you know that he needs deliverance the bible says this kind cannot go except through fasting and prayer and there are men and women of God, God has ordained in order to deliver people, whether you like it or not. Not every person has that power. Of course, there are men and women of God that are anointed for deliverance. I don't owe any person any apology. So therefore, be part of our, our deliverance hour every Wednesday from 10 to 12. You will pray. You will come and learn to pray. Because you can pray for yourself and we pray individually and corporately. There's always an answer. Every Wednesday, it has been going on and the results have been fantastic. To him alone be the glory and to him alone be the honor. Of course and indeed, we pray at night. Every last and first Friday of every month, Friday, instead of you to waste your time watching, or well, it's good to watch films and but. Don't waste all the time. It's good to keep night vigil. Our Lord Jesus Christ prayed all night. He excelled. David prayed all night. He excelled. Moses did all night. He excelled. There's something about night. The midnight prayer. The midnight study. So why not be part of the service any of the Friday, I mean last and first Friday of every month. And we start by 9 o'clock and end by 12, by His grace. Of course, the Sunday service is a day of celebration. It's a day of blessing. It's usually uh, fantastic. You, if, uh, if I'm not sure of any Sunday, uh, what will happen? But I'm sure that God will touch you because of when the choir, during choir administration, the presence of God is usually always, always there. Be part of it is the first service it is nine o'clock to 12 in the noon and the last but not the least of course is from 12 to 2 p.m usually fantastic every sunday now 
I think uh, it is where they, somebody they're looking at me, God will prove your case. I don't know who you are. Whatever you are going through, God is going to vindicate you, and you will laugh last, and you will laugh well. The enemy orchestrated it. They, work, they wanted to bring shame to your family, but they have failed. God, they, they, Joseph told his brothers, what you meant, fashioned, orchestrated, and planned for evil, has turned for good. That is where God is God. And that's why I thought that we said, for he is God, for he is God, he is our God, he is our God forever and forever and ever. Hallelujah. He will be, he will be my God, our guide from now, even to, to the end. I don't want to shortchange the choir and they are waiting. So we go to the choir. You are called from beginning to the end. There's no room for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no room for argument. You are God all by
unchangeable God and we thank God and bless God. I hope you did enjoy that ministration. Oh my goodness. I wish I was enjoying. I mean, on my way. well, but it's good to stay here. The word of God, because the word of God is all uh, is powerful, is necessary. Because the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. And we began a teaching last time. I'm sure I was we, we were talking about Joshua. And and God told Joshua that I will magnify thee. And so we are we are continuing on that teaching. Why God will magnify some people? Why some people are uh, you find that they get elevated? Why uh, and uh, we began to talk uh, from the realm of belief that for God to magnify you, you must have belief and believe you must be fully persuaded to believe in something is not to give any room. Like we said, you are God from the beginning to the end. There's no room for argument. You are God by yourself. It means that He is God hundred percent. You are God. Mm -hmm. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God by yourself. Ebo Joko. Wow. And I'm left to pray every hand stretch. Any mirror they are using to invoke your name. I don't know who you are. You can't sleep. You are looking at me. You are asleep is your problem now. What they are doing is to invoke your name. And I pray. In their name that is above every other name, every invocation. Anywhere they are using your picture, your body part, to call you unto shame, unto disgrace, unto death. From today and forever. I have, I have intervened in that matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I come into that matter, and I use the name of Jesus to come into that matter. And I make a decree that the day they will call your name again, let the blood of Jesus whom I serve answer them. Amen. Amen. And let God deliver you from the hands of the wicked. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because at times people can fight you out of envy, out of jealousy, out of fear, out of nothing, and they begin to fight. And for those of you who don't know your God, that's why we said you don't need to sit down. And I think I should do that teaching on those who know their God. They shall be strong and do exploit. But today, I've come to talk about why God will magnify me and you. We talk about the realm of belief. We want to dwell on the realm of being diligent. What is to be diligent? To be consistent and focused and not distracted, which has a foundation in belief. Because if you if you believe and your heart is, is fully persuaded for who God is, nothing can distract you. That's why some of you, why you run from one church to the other? You're, some some people are not a friend. If he has gone to every church in this town, including my own, but my own is the last bus stop. And because he's not fully persuaded, he will move from one church to another. You will see people they move. Before you get into any church, you pray about the church, including my own. Than to get in and get out, get in and get out. All you, you, some of you go out of the building of the church. Of course, our new building has come. Amen. A new seat is good, a new building. The, the camera men cannot be seeing me anyhow, other see me, and I will not be seeing them too anyhow. In our new building, they will be moving in the air, even moving from no whistle, from somewhere, but now. They see me, I see them, I push them, and they push me, I can shift. Or you come at man, move there. But time comes in, we have our new place, beautiful place. And the cameraman, they, they will not come to tell me they were led to join us now. <laughs> because things must happen in Jesus' name. Amen. And, we, and, we, and they have their own car, the media outreach. Uh, there will, things will happen. And they will become more, you see, 
You see, at times, because if you believe in something, it gives you room to be diligent. If you are a student, you don't believe in the course of study, or you don't believe in success, you will not study to work hard. You will just be studying for studying take to impress your parents. As a serious student wants to make a mark in the class and make A's and B's, good grades, because he is diligent, but he must be diligent. You, you must to be diligent. You must be consistently focused and not easily distracted because some people are distracted. And some people, like I said, the, it's good. So, if you want God to magnify you, just like if you are diligent in your office and you work hard, none of your, the, your, your boss will, can never do anything if you work hard. I used to have a boss that didn't like me, but I work hard so he cannot help. Then I was a junior officer. But I know he didn't like me for one reason or other. Well, he feels that I'm so close to the customers. The customers like me. He's the manager. But the customer seems to like me. But he didn't know that because the, the customers are not educated. So I speak to them from their own understanding and help them to write notes, to make application, loan application to the bank. Even though they, they are applying to me, I will teach them, I will help them to write it. And they go and type and bring. And they will tell me, ah, good man. It's not because I'm good, no. Because I understand their predicament. They are not educated. So I did that to help them. And they liked me. And my manager did not like me. But I was hard working. He couldn't help it. It cost me B+. I said I don't have a, a fault. He said, any weakness? He said, no. He says, what is my greatest strength? He said, very decisive. I am too. I'm decisive. You know where I stand at any time, T. I don't wither. You know where I stand for. Now, I'm for Christ. I'm forever. And that's why God told Moses something. God told someone, Exodus. Exodus 15, 26. <coughs> The book of Ezra 15, 26. Ezra 15, 26. And the first person, the first person, the first Praise the Lord. Amen. Exodus 15, 26. Yes. And said, uh -huh. if thou will diligently hearken to the voice... He said, if thou will diligently... Yes. If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of thy Lord thy uh, God, uh -huh. and will do that which is right in his sight, uh -huh. and will give ear to his commandments, uh -huh. and keep all his statutes, uh -huh. I will put none of these diseases upon uh -huh. thee. Aha! He said that, okay, now hold on. He said that, God said, if you can diligently hearken to what I say, if you can diligently follow what I will tell you, so you don't follow what you want to do at your own time and will. The problem in some homes or family is that somebody means they say you do things at your own time. No, your son shouldn't do wash the, the, the dishes or so at their own time. There's a time to wash a dish. There's a time to clean the house. Not at your there's a time for everything. Not to at your own time. At your own leisure. That is the problem. A, a responsible man will not do things at his own time. You do them at when it is right. You pay, you pay the bills at the right time. When it is right. Not at diligently. Then you will be promoted anywhere. At home there will be peace. Promotion of love. Understanding. Appreciation of each other. So Moses repeated it in Deuteronomy 6, 17. Deuteronomy 6, 17. Moses said something. And Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 as well. Deuteronomy 6, 17. Deuteronomy 6, 17. Yes. 
You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. your God uh -huh. and his testimonies uh -huh. and his statutes uh -huh. which he had commanded thee. So, for God to showcase you, for God to magnify you, if you are following God in your business, in your ministry, it's not like a pastor. They say, oh, somebody said, we fast every month. We, we don't have a choice. Why? Because I don't want, want power anywhere. I don't want to go where they go. I don't need to preach to eat. So I don't need to die because of others. Because by the end of the day, if you want to use voodoo on members to help God, you are doing it for yourself and you end up in hellfire. So all those voodoo they use and all those charm and all those things they do in church or in churches. In some churches where they give you food every day to keep you in the church, to keep you. Nothing is changing in your life. Nothing, no, no, nothing, nothing. Yet you are there. Marking time. Why? But when you diligently follow the rules of engagement of God, if you fast and pray, power comes to you as a man of God. If you live holy, power comes to you as a man of God. If you don't begin to do things, to cheat, to begin to use church money, to invest for your wife, for property, for mortgage, for hotel, for this, or people may not know. Or God upstairs, we know. So how can God prosper you till the end? That's why you see that some of the pastors who should have been in their glory as, as they are getting older, they are being insulted in the ministry. People don't know the meaning of that. If towards the end of your career you are getting insult, it shows that God has left you. <laughs> Toward the end of the career of Saul, he, he was gotten insult. If you watch now on internet and in social media, people are bold to speak about men of God. You some ten years ago, you can't talk to them like that way because their time has passed and they are in error and they are doing the will not no longer the will of God. Because they are no longer following, listening to God. God retires people, if you don't know that. Solomon, David retired before he died. And he said, I have so many sons, but Solomon is you, God says. So all these teachings, of course, if you retire from active service, it doesn't mean you will stop church. That does not mean you will stop church. Of being but you leave the active role because what is happening in politics is happening in church now. They don't retire. The Pope, the Pope, this Pope now, one Pope retired. He knew he can't do the job again. He said, No, I retire. If it is black man, he will not retire, he will die there. He will think about the plane. He will think about so many things. But he knows that I can't do this job. I can't function the way I will function. Nobody can function the way you can function when you were of certain age. There is a time for everything. Then you not do a you not plan a transition. But no. Because they are out of the will of God. They are not diligently following God. They are Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Anybody? Uh, give me Proverbs 10 4. Proverbs 10 4. The first person. Proverbs 10 4. It says that. Yes. Uh, Praise the Lord. Yeah, okay. He, he become a poor uh -huh. that dealeth with a slack hand. Uh -huh. But the hand of the diligent uh -huh. make it rich. He said, one way to be very poor in life is that if you are not diligent, one way to be being a poor man faster, very fast, is to be inconsistent. 
Somebody saw me the other day. He said, do you mean you just left bank and became a pastor? I said, yes. He said, how? I said, I, said, I, I, left. I was called by God. But I was still diligent. I was praying for three years every night. Three years. I was being working up between 10 every day. Between 10 and 11, I was wake to pray to three every day of my life. God was anointing me himself. So one day I said, no, 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 enough. I know what to do. I took, I took some sleeping tablets. Volume, volume four or five, they call it. I took, I took two, so that I will, I will knock off well. I said, yeah, enough of this, my prayer. My eye became fixed like this. I can't close it. I had, the earlier you pray, the better for you. I had it clear. Ah, I woke up from the, I received the wake up. I stood up from the bed. I began to pray. Immediately I prayed for the normal hours I pray. I lay down and I slept. I found out that it was God that kept me awake. Because he needed, I needed to be consistent. God is consistent. He told Joshua in Joshua 1 9, he said, I mean 8 to 9. He said, This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth. You shall meditate on it day and what? Night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. He didn't say day. Then after a week, you know, he said day is consistent. Day. And I now discovered in my prayer now. If you want, in the last prayer point I did, I began to, before, I used to pray, like, today is what? Fifth of, uh, fifth. I said, I soak today in the blood of Jesus. I need to soak today in the blood of Jesus, the day, then you soak the night in the blood of Jesus. And because he said day and night, the covenant of the day and the covenant of the night are totally different. What God promised night and what God promised day are totally different. Jeremiah 33 from verse 25. God, I'm not going there, sir. He said that if you can keep the, if you I have the covenant of the day and the covenant of the night. So what did God promise day? What did God promise night? I give you as an assignment. You there watching at me. So that these are the deep ordinances of success. That is why we pray in the morning, we pray in the day, we pray at night. You think it is comfort? It's not comfortable for me and the workers. But there's no way out. If you want to be a worker here, you you be a worker, not to wear tie and come and sit up. I be Andrew. Yes, sir. Not to wear ask him. He's tired. I've seen, I've seen way. I've seen days. Not to wear tie and be jumping about. Hallelujah. You see. Satan does not understand big English. He understands power. <laughs> power. Just because of time. Proverbs 13, 4. Proverbs 13, 4. And with him. The book of Proverbs, yes? 13, 4. Proverbs 13, 4. Yes, sir. The soul of the sluggard mm -hmm. desire it uh -huh. and have nothing. Uh -huh. But the soul of the diligent uh -huh. shall be made fat. Say it again. He said, the soul of the sluggard uh -huh. desire it. Yeah, it desires to enjoy. And have nothing. He will have nothing. He desire it. Means that he desire pleasure. You, know, you want to relax. Cool. Cool weather. Yes. But the soul of the diligent uh -huh. shall be made fat. If being, being diligent in that verse means hot. Now is hot. Some people will find every excuse not to come to church. It's too hot. I'm going to the pool. God will, God will uh, understand. In winter again, it's too cold. Oh dear, I, I'm staying indoors. So winter or summer, you have reason. And some people are like that. They, you see, there's a reason. There's two billion reason not to do anything you don't want to do. Proverbs twenty-one verse five, sir. And Proverbs 22, 29. Then I can allow people to come in. Proverbs 21, verse 5. Yes. Proverbs 21, verse 5. Yes. 
He said, the thoughts of the diligent uh -huh. tend only to plenteousness. Uh -huh. But of everyone that is hasty, uh -huh. only to want. Uh -huh. So, he said, the thought, say it again, I want to. The thought of the diligent uh -huh. tend only to plenteousness. Uh -huh. But of everyone uh -huh. that is hasty, uh -huh. only to want. Exactly. When you are diligent, because diligence and patience go hand in hand. If you are diligent and patient, because diligence, do diligence, not only in contract, of course, in everything. Do diligence in contract means following every layer, and in the in and out of every contract. I'm, I'm right. I know I actually is a, is a, a former contractor. He's not <laughs> contracted for God. He's a, <laughs> you know, and uh, he's a lawyer in the house. I made him a lawyer. I I know I know then him. He can say lawyer in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, Proverbs twenty two verse twenty nine. Yes. Proverbs twenty two verse twenty nine. Yes. Seest thou a man uh -huh. diligent in his business? Mm -hmm. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Okay. He said, if you see a man diligent, serious, consistent, focused. You will appear before great people. Greatness does not come at the, at the altar of, of laziness. I think I've stopped so far. And uh, so probably should allow just to have somebody to come in. Yes, anybody? Yes, yes. Yes, and to come in. Yes, I'm with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. You say diligence is, like Pastor said, is being, being consistent. Commitment, commitment, committed to what you are doing, not in and out. You are either so that people can trust you because there's people you are doing business with. Just even as business, if they cannot trust you, if they cannot know understand what, what you are in any particular situation, mm. they cannot commit anything to you. you say, take for example, even this shop around here. You say, there are some shops that you open. You, say, you know when they're open. You know, if I go at a certain time, I can get this, I can get that. But it's also shows that I never know when they're open. So it affects your business, it affects your daily life. It affects your relationship with God. If God cannot trust you for anything, if you are today you are in, you are out, understand? You cannot go far with God. Because if you go to also in Jeremiah 17, God repeated the same thing. Yeah. If I can diligently hearken unto the Lord your God, not obey God when it pleases you, not serve God when it is confident for you or when you want to serve God, but commit yourself to, to, to God and do that what you are, you are doing in the house of God. It's like, not because somebody asks, praise you or somebody maybe commend you or whatever, but if you are giving an assignment in, in the house of God, make know that you are doing assignment unto God, not unto man. Whether anybody appreciates you or praise you or commend you is, is a material. It's like, but it's only God who can reward you. But if we do our service in the house of God because somebody prays us, because somebody acknowledges us, or because somebody gives us a part at the back, then we're not doing it unto God. And we're not serving God. And we're not being committed. That's not diligence. Diligence when you do it, whether somebody sees it or not, but you know that I'm supposed to do this thing, and it's the right thing for me to do, and we're there. And people can count on you. And people can trust you. And people can say, yes, I know this person will do this thing, or will not do this, or will not do that. So it helps you, both in your family, both in the church, both in your business, to be diligent and to be committed in whatever you are doing. I, I think uh, that's a very, very, very powerful submission. In the sense that he brought out the issue of trust and shop. I, last week, I, saw, I, I didn't know the shop owner was there. Then I told this, the man that I, was, I wanted to get olive oil. I said, you people close early. Why? For some time now, you are closing early. Because the other time, I wanted to pick up Oliver around 9. No, the man says, no, we close 10. So the, I didn't know the madam is the owner of the shop. He said, oh, they close. I said, well. So, and I knew that. <laughs> I believe because the shop keep closing early. Unlike before, they stay 10. But now, by 8.30, they are done, without knowing that the madam did not know. So, the essence of doing, like he said, very important, some people work, yeah, because of time, because of time. There are people who come to church, all you do that, if they don't give you pastor, if you are here, you will go quick. Because there are people who come to church, all they need is position, to read Bible, 
a microphone. Meanwhile, he doesn't study the Bible. He's not even born again. But he likes to be seen by men. And they run from, they will go from one church to the other. May God deliver you. Amen. All right, any person ask me, just please. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, like uh, the, we were talking about diligence in regards to magnification of God in our life, God magnifying us. And the uh, pastor read a place in the book of Proverbs 13, verse 4. And I want to read that again. He said, The soul of the sluggard desired and had nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Meaning, if we are not diligent in serving God, there is no way God can magnify us. Because his word is saying, it is only with diligence that our soul can be made fat. Therefore, as children of God, if we say we are actually children of God, in serving God, in prayers, in attending church, in doing one or the other thing in the church, doing anything in the church, we should be diligent. So that in doing that, God, Himself can magnify us by making our soul fat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. I think because of time, I will, she, I, she has just captured it very well. And uh, I don't know who is looking at me there. This message is for you. Some people stop church uh, because they don't get position. Go and, and begin your own. I think it's easy to begin. Go and begin. After all, somebody has come to me that. I say, we say he wants to go and begin to. I say, how? The God speak, he say, no, he's himself and some friends. They are gathered together. So go and gather. <laughs> oh, dear. I will tell sir. Yes? Yes? No, yes? Sister J, yes, I will tell you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think the topic, uh, based on um, what Pastor has been preaching, diligence is a virtue that every person, every Christian, whether you're a Christian or not, it's a virtue that we should all aim to you know, strive towards. The Word of God says, I'm not sure exactly what it is, that He's a reward, that God is a reward of those who diligently Speaking. seek Him. Meaning that diligence comes with reward. Take, even in a family setting, if you're diligent as a child in doing what you're supposed to do, you will definitely attract the favor of your parents. Yeah. If you're diligent as a wife in doing what you're supposed to, you will de definitely attract the favor of your husband and vice versa. Even in your workplace, if you're diligent doing what you're supposed to do, with, not with eye service, because many a time people do things, you know, because of either what they will gain or they are trying to curry favor. But when you are diligent and committed in what you're doing, knowing that there's a reward, the person that will reward you, the, your boss may not even know. But as long as you're diligent, God, who sees in secret, he will cause that favor, that promotion to come to you. And one thing I would like also to say is that with diligence, it comes with, uh, you must leave your place of comfort. With, say, in a church setting, you don't come to church when it, it, it suits you. Come rain or shine, if you're committed and diligent, definitely God will reward you. You don't say because it's too hot or because it's too cold, or even when you're in church, you're coming to please the pastor. Whether the pastor is there or not, do what you're supposed to do in the house of God. God, who sees in secret, he will reward you in the, in the open. That's what I have to say. Wow. In Jesus' name. Amen. That is, you captured the area at a very, very powerful submission. Especially even children, even children. If you are diligent, your father cannot hate you. If you are supposed to do what you are supposed to do. But if you are all about, and uh, you begin to expect your father to like, you know, there is, like, like he rightly said, every diligent, there is a reward. If you are fully diligent in doing evil, you will get a reward, imprisonment. So it's anything you do diligently, but <laughs> if you are diligent in stealing, you will be caught one day. So that, I think, uh, yeah, 
Have enthusiasm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I just want to basically emphasize the scripture that you, you uh, called out, sir, in uh, Proverbs 22, 29. It says, uh, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, and he shall not stand before mean men. Uh, what I personally take from this is that diligence is a steady and constant application following the tenets, the commandments, and the ordinances which our Lord God has given us to follow. You find that when we, in our season of magnification and manifestation, to magnify, to enlarge, enlarge here, recognizing your work, either privately or publicly. In any way, like Sister Joe has said, you will be recognized for your effort. You are not doing it unto man. So when we are in a place of worship, in particular, a church like Jesus Sanctuary Ministry, whether pastor is around or not, we as members must endeavor to attend church. We are not here to worship pastor. We are here to worship the Almighty God. If you adopt that diligence also in our private lives, even as a student or as a businessman, you know when to study. And you know that if you study consistently at an appointed time, you will reap the result. Often, many times we are told, people who wait to the very last minute just to do some last minute revision, end up failing. Why? It so happens in our own private lives as well. As a businessman, what will endear you to your clients or customers is the way you conduct your, your, your work. If things are to be done, for instance, you are to issue offers or contracts or to review, and you don't do it at the time that you're supposed to do it, your clients will work. Because as God gives us favor, it is for rather we understand and appreciate what we are doing. And as a favored child of God, you will know that that has come to you as a result of diligence. So we must never take it for granted. When we say, hacking on to what God has said, we are holding on fast because we believe that what we are is where God has placed us. So we must always, always be mindful of the fact that if we are not diligent in whatever we do, we may suffer the consequences. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. And that is the meaning that equally to, I mean, like it, to be diligent is a key. It's the key. If you want God to magnify you spiritually, because at times temptation, trials, frustration, they are there. When you are relating with God, it is it, not the God of instant. God is not microwaved. It's not something you're microwaving. No, no, no. God can allow a microwaving in, in his relationship at the beginning. If you are if you are a baby in the Lord. But that is why at times when you become born again new, things seem to end, get in place. But as you get involved, he wants you to grow. Like in First Peter 2 from verse 1, just because of time, he said that you should not remain a babe in the Lord. You should grow. And these are the tests of characters. If you are diligent, your wife is your wife, and you are diligent. No matter how wicked the man is, no matter because some men too are wicked, and so and so women too are terrible. At least it will reduce his wickedness instead of eighty percent. It comes to twenty. I don't know who's looking at me, but it is well. There's somebody there looking at me, Father. You are you all your effort, everybody's stretch out. Your effort to help other people, to help in your office, in your church, even when people have taken advantage of you, God will fight your battle. Amen. Amen. I don't know who you are. There's somebody there looking at me. Don't be don't be down. You are feeling so bad about what happened to you. It's for your good and for your reason. But don't stop going to church. Amen. That is the message. Because you have a future. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you don't have our Lord Jesus Christ, that is a total bargain. Jesus is not spiritual correctness. Jesus is real. And he is coming back. Just as you are real, Jesus is real. 
Just like we have read, Jesus is not something like a, a fairy tale. No, it's as real as, as I'm real, as you are real. But you need to allow him to touch you, and your life will change for the better. Uh, because many people are suffering. Without Christ, you have crisis. Without Christ, you can never, in this life, that's what I, you look at millionaires and billionaires. Like I look at um, Mike Jackson, give me his word. I will turn the whole world to Christian zone if I have his money. But yet, with that money, he has no peace. He cannot sleep. When some of you are even sleeping after I'm speaking. So, because there's more to life than you know. You, you are not, you are made by God for a purpose and you will actualize it. But you need Jesus Christ, who is the leader of the way. And he will lead you aright in Jesus' name. Amen. Why? Yeah. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit praise His name. Jesus is my 